Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. Johnson, with another episode of Virtual Schooling. Today we're going to be going over Ruthless by William DeMille. Um, start the story with a quick summary. Um, in Ruthless, uh, it's a very short, short story, a couple pages long. Um, a guy named Judson Webb is very upset that somebody um, stole a couple of drinks out of his liquor cabinet over the summer. So he decides to poison the liquor, okay? And what happens is he ends up slipping and falling on an acorn. His wife goes away to tell the neighbor that he poisoned the, the liquor. He slips on an acorn. The guy that's tending to his boats comes up, helps him up, and uh, ends up giving him a drink of the very drink that he had just poisoned. Like I said, quick short story, guys. Um, we're just going to go over these uh, quick questions I assign. So question one, which character traits would you describe Judson Webb? So we have cruel, greedy, vindictive, and all of the above. So for that one, we're going to have to go all of the above, right, guys? Because he, he's clearly cruel. He's poisoning this liquor bottle so that anybody who drinks it will die. And he doesn't care who it is. He's, um, he's greedy. I mean, he says in the story he's like five bucks or a hundred bucks. I still feel bad any time somebody takes any money from me. It feels bad, right? And he's vindictive, which means he's trying to get revenge here, right, guys? Uh, that's what he's doing. He's getting revenge for somebody that stole a drink from him last summer. So it's all of the above on there. Question two, what is the central conflict of the story? So the conflict is that somebody robbed him, right? So now he's searching for revenge. So the answer to that one is A, Judson Webb is concerned with someone stealing from him, so he seeks revenge. So that's what he does, right? Which of these events is the story's climax? So the climax means the top of the story, right, guys? The, the very top bit. So um, the climax here is when he slips on the acorn, because that leaves us uh, a bit of time before the uh, resolution of the story, right, guys? It's all the way up. He poisons right so he, he poisons the bourbon the wife leaves he slips on an acorn and then he takes the drink so that's the resolution it goes up like an arc like that right guys next question how does the conversation between Judson and his wife develop the plot of the passage um, what happens here guys is that conversation prompts Alex's wife to go warn or excuse me, it prompts Judson's wife to warn Alex's wife about the poison. So she leaves, which means she's not there when he trips and falls on the acorn to help him out, right? Because she wouldn't have given him the poison whiskey. So if that had never happened, then she would have been there to stop that particular thing from occurring. Um, which statement expresses the main theme there will be consequences if you take justice into your own hands. Right, guys? Um, essentially, that's the answer because uh, we have a justice system. We talked about justice in a couple other of these videos. But, uh, I mean, the law really takes it very seriously if you try to take justice into your own hands. If you're interested more in the subject, look at Catco versus Briney. It's a very famous um, American jurisprudence case. Uh, it's, it deals with the similar um, circumstances here. Uh, the courts really don't like when people take justice into their own hands. That's why we have a justice system. Uh, the courts especially don't like when the harm for something as simple as stealing a $5 drink is death. Uh, just American justice doesn't agree with that. So don't take justice into your own hands. Uh, alert proper authorities. That's what, that's what the story's about, right, guys? Um, the next question deals with that as well. How does the resolution contribute to the theme of the passage? Um, it proves that it's dangerous to take justice into your own hands, right? I mean, he ended up being hurt by his own, his own trap. I mean, if you trap something thinking that you're going to stop somebody from doing something and you only get hurt by that trap, or if somebody else gets hurt, I mean, that's, that's not really fair justice. Right? I mean, American justice, I, I wish that we were in class still. We could talk a little bit more about this. I like to talk about that. I think it's important, even though this is an English class, 
um, justice is fair. It's equitable. Justice essentially aims to have people um, be whole again. So whatever damage you've done to somebody, like that damage is aimed to be repaired. We don't really hinder somebody that has done damage all too much in uh, American litigation, okay? A small glass was pressed to his lips, dazed and half conscious. He drank. Which part of the story's plot is expressed in quotations above? That is the resolution of the story, right, guys? We talked about that. That's the end, the last bit of important part of the story. He drank his own poison. Not a good look, right? So, and then who's the story's protagonist? We know protagonist means main character, the person you follow around, right? Um, clearly here, the protagonist is Judson Webb. It's not Alec, Alec's wife, or Mabel. They're barely in the story. It is Judson Webb. When Alec unknowingly gives Judson the poisoned whiskey, what type of irony is presented? Um, in this case, the irony is going to be either dramatic or situational irony. I've actually left that question. They're both correct. So it's dramatic irony because, I mean, it's dramatic, right? It's also situational because he's created the situation. And ironic means foolish in a strange way, right? Or, or foolish in almost a really smart way. So it's ironic here, guys, that that's what happened. If I should drop dead, you can do as you please. The stuff will be yours. What story element do we see presented in the dialogue spoken by Judson? Um, this is foreshadowing, right, guys? He's talking about if I were to die right here. And what happens is he does die, right? So it's foreshadowing. It's talking about the plot going forward. Uh, there's a lot of irony in this story, but that, that part isn't really that ironic. He's just saying that, you know, if he died, this would all be her stuff. And then she could use those things. Um, again, not figurative language. Um, and it's, it's, there's no ambiguity here, guys. It's pretty clear cut. Uh, if I die, this will all be yours. And then Judson Webb's name is represented. Ugh, excuse me. Judson Webb's name, Webb, is resem... resem uh, try that a third time. Judson Webb's name, Webb, is representative of which story element? Um, it's, it's symbolic, right, guys? It's a symbolic name. He's a spider in a web, right? He's created a web. You're going to get caught in the web. Uh, yeah, Carl, you have something to add about this? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't really have any questions, but uh, I, uh, I answered all the questions like I asked Mr. Johnson, and I got this, uh, got this file for you right here, so you can, uh, you can, you can answer that. You can, you can look at my answers. Thanks, I guess. What is this, a, a floppy disk? Carl, you're telling me that you saved all of your answers on a floppy disk. Yes. Carl, I really doubt that you did that. You didn't answer the questions, did you? Are you calling me a liar? I don't have to stand for this. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for uh, this edition of Virtual Schooling. I'm Mr. Johnson. Hope I didn't confuse you more than I helped you. See you next time.